Tabua, 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 Untuk terlihat kembali guna barang enam puluh lima enam bantu enam sen. Oh lor lima, lagi lagi susu dalam pasar. Untuk untuk terlihat enam bola FM enam bantu enam sen. Bola FM enam bantu enam sen. This is FBC News. I'm Jackie Spate. In this bulletin, rain provides some relief for areas affected by prolonged dry spell. Islamic leaders told to help spread the message on ending gender-based violence. And three-day event helps youth learn to cope with issues affecting the younger generation. Religious leaders have been called upon to take responsibility and get the message across that no one has the right to abuse the right and trust of women and children. This was the message by Minister for Trade and Tourism, Fayaz Koya, during the celebration to mark the birth of Prophet Muhammad in Ba. Trade Minister Fayaz Koya says, Fiji has given respect to all religion and beliefs, which very few countries in the world have achieved. Koya strongly believes that religion can be a unifying force a bridge between different communities. To be a Muslim requires commitment, a way of life that fortifies the soul and encourages a positive relationship with one's fellow human beings. Islam requires the believers to put their faith into action and practice. And carrying out the five pillars, Muslims are able to put faith into practice in their everyday lives. Koya says Fiji Muslims are showing the world how Muslims should live side by side with people of other faiths. Addressing influential members of the Muslim community, he spoke of the need to end gender-based violence. Koya says the authorities have zero tolerance for crimes against children and women, and perpetrators will face the full brunt of the law. I condemn the epidemic of domestic violence and violence against children, against the children of Fiji. It has been going on for many years, many, many years. And every culture has its beauty, its charm, but it also has its ugly and un uh, ugly underbelly. And domestic violence and abuse of children has become uh, the ugly underbelly of Fijian culture. It has been allowed to persist for too long it came to be something we actually lived with. It wasn't pretty, but it, al it has always been with us for as long as any of us can remember. Koya ended by saying that no religion allows the abuse of trust that women and children place on men. Razana Nisha, FBC News. Water carting to areas affected by lack of rain has been put on hold. Heavy rain has been experienced in most parts of the Western Division, which has eased the situation to some extent. Divisional Planning Officer Wesiti Venitavanga says this is relief for places which haven't seen rain for more than five months. Savara Tumboa has more. Rain in the West has come as a blessing for residents who've relieved on water trucks to meet their daily needs. People have been encouraged to save rainwater for their needs while authorities look after maritime areas which are still pretty dry. Still continue with uh, the cutting of water to the Asawas. Uh, although they have, they have been uh, raining in the Asawas, but uh, still not enough to fill the, the tanks and uh, the wells, uh, the source of water available in the Asawas. Uh, the birds, uh, common birds, when uh, lying still in the Asawas, except today, uh, delivering water. Director of Meteorology Ravindra Kumar is advising members of the public to use water sparingly and store as much as can be. Kumar says the next few days will be more rain, but there is no indication of a prolonged rainy season. 
The weather update for the next few days is that a moist east to southwest east wind flow is expected to prevail over the country. Uh, occasional showers uh, over the eastern and the interior parts of the larger islands. Uh, in the western parts of the country, we would expect fine uh, apart from afternoon or evening showers and isolated thunderstorms, uh, which uh, may also see that some heavy falls uh, are likely. The Divisional Planning Officer West will continue to provide water tanks in affected areas to assist farmers whose produce may be affected by a lack of rain. Sabaira Tamboa, FBC News. An increase in visitors and more investments is expected to flood Lombasa come 2016. Akusita Tale spoke to the Lombasa Chamber of Commerce and reports the new number Walun Riketi Highway is a major contributing factor. There's a reason Lombasa is called the sleepy town. Business is usually slow, hitting its peak only during the sugarcane harvesting season. However, come January, the Lombasa Chamber of Commerce expects a definitive change in the pace of life with the completion of the number one Keti Highway. There will be um, foreign investors coming to the, uh, to the north because uh, they'll be saving some freight. Freight is a factor in the north. So by this road, the crossing uh, by sea is um, maybe three hours. So definitely we are expecting more investors in the north. What used to be a dusty, bumpy and sometimes dangerous five-hour drive from the Nambawalu jetty to Lombasa has been cut down to around two hours. This is expected to pull more visitors to the north. Businesses are already planning to cater for tourists from Fiji and abroad. The weekends and the long weekends when there's a holiday like Easter and other, when we'll be having more visitors in the north, uh, definitely we are trying to extend our opening hours. And we also want to have some night activities in the north. So that's, by that, it will boom our business. A lot of people will gain out of that. Local and overseas investors have been encouraged to take a serious look at the potential in Lombasa and help bolster the economy. Akusita Tale, FBC News. About 120 students from around Fiji took part in a three-day event aimed at capacity building and upskilling. The Christian Mind Lecture is run by the International Youth Fellowship, which works, of, works to empowering young people to better handle their lives. Shridi Prasad has more. The fellowship included a series of talks on issues which are commonly faced by young people. Some of the participants say they have been talking about personal problems which they haven't been able to overcome or get help for. Before I used to take the drugs like alcoholism and uh, smoking and now when I attend the, the mind lecture and uh, I, quit, uh, I quit it and uh, now I'm uh, improving very well. Through this we're able to understand that there's, better, there's a better thing for us to do without being controlled by our peers. Before I came to this uh, RYF I was uh, always a person that uh, can't uh, can't listen to others and uh, can't control myself. Uh, one of the experiences that I faced was to learn how to have a stronger heart. Through your, of course, so one thing that I learned in this uh, mind lecture is that everything begins from the heart. The International Youth Fellowship may be a church organization, but its lectures are always designed to identify social problems such as drug abuse, alcohol abuse, peer pressure, and sexually transmitted infection, among others. The theme for this year is Navigating Your Heart, which encourages participants to share the difficulties they are facing to ensure they get help from their elders. International Youth Fellowship Camp Coordinator Marika Nakavandra says, sharing is a good coping strategy and also helps better understand the challenges they face. One of the things the youth, uh, one of the problems the youth now is the desires. As we grow up, our desires rise, especially with the youth. Uh, the, they see lots of things, technology, their friends have it, uh, but they do not think of their parents and what they can afford. The Mind Lecture ends tonight. Shriti Prasad, FBC News. Coming up after the break, new ambassador to the United States, Solo Mara, expects a busy time ahead. And I love meet your family. Hi, my name is Sonny. 
from Canberra. I love listening Mirchi FM online. I am Urmila Devi, Asiasi Tawwa. I am from Shandil and Ashmil. Tawwa is locked in the Tawwa. We are from here in Singapore. We are from Singapore. Mirchi FM is hot. I am Shelly in Tawwa Nausori. Mirchi music simply been dance in Nausori. Mirchi FM is hot. 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 Welcome back. This is FBC News. Fiji's newly appointed ambassador to the United States of America, Solo Mara, says he looks forward to his new role. Mara was previously the High Commissioner to the United Kingdom. Akusita Tale has more. Solo Mara is ready to take on the new role, representing us in what is regarded as one of the most powerful countries in the world. Solo Mara says his first task is to lay the groundwork for increased political engagement and get involved with the Fijian community living there. We will be working closely with the relevant line agencies, the government agencies in Fiji, uh, to, uh, to assist our diaspora community in the, in the U.S. I know there are many of them in the West Coast and also in Canada, where I'm also accredited as Fiji's High Commissioner. I will be uh, looking forward to working with the community leaders in that regard. The commissioner says he will be making contact with the scattered Fijian population and try and get them to reinvest in Fiji. And see how together we can use the diaspora community, use the assistance program and the opportunities, market opportunities within the U.S. assist the development goals uh, that has been identified uh, in Fiji. So we've had a good, I've had a good um, run in 2015 in the UK and I'm so looking forward to 2016 uh, in the US. Fiji's foreign policy is friends to all and with renewed cooperation with the United States, the embassy in Washington is sure to have a busy few years ahead. Mara is also accredited to Canada and Mexico with a three-year term. Akusit Tale, FBC News. A group of women in Nasino are celebrating what they say is a proud achievement, raising over $50,000 for a new church. 25 women of Temple Methodist Church of Nasino fundraise for a year to meet the target. Savara Tamboa reports. Most of these women are housewives with little disposable income to go around. But that didn't matter once they put their mind to raising cash for a church. They sold handmade earrings, food parcels, and anything they could make from home. We had gone through a hard time collecting funds for the church, since most of us are unemployed. This isn't the first fundraiser for this church. Two years ago, the congregation collected over $60,000 for a piece of land to build a church. The women's group had lots of experience to fall back. Their main aim, providing spiritual inspiration for the leaders of tomorrow. There are only 25 of us, and we managed to work together for the benefit of this initiative. I will open the floodgates. Three women from the church who moved to the United States more than a decade ago also showed their commitment, donating 20,000 Fijian dollars. The church was formerly known as Wunivaivai Methodist Church, but after a visit from the Temple United Methodist Church in San Francisco, decided to adopt a new name. The main objective of this solely fundraising is just towards the building of our new church um, that we have been uh, continuing for the last two years. And we hope that, you know, we're coming towards the end of it, which we will have funds to start building this church. A two-story building plan has already been completed for the new church. Sabera Tambua, FBC News. Today we will feature a brief look back at the events that happened in the first three months of the year. Shireen Lata takes us through what made the headlines. Sugar. 2015 started with sad news of the death of the permanent secretary for sugar, Manasa Vaningi, who was hospitalized and died after a short illness on New Year's Day. He was laid to rest in Nandi on 9th January. 
U.S. Ambassador to Fiji Frankie Reed completed her three-year term in the country on 14th January. Her successor Judith Safkin took over the position a month later. Also in January, the National Carrier Fiji Airways withdrew its membership from the Association of South Pacific Airlines, which came in light of strongly biased public announcements made by ISPA, which the airline opposed. Later in the month, four women from Thailand were deported for illegally working at a spa in Nandi. The women were found after immigration officers raided the Thailand Massage and Spa located at Port Denarau. A senior executive of Lee's Trading, Holland Sito, was murdered inside the company factory on 29th January and was laid to rest at the Chinese cemetery in Suva three days later. On 1st February, Prime Minister Vorenge Bainimarama announced the government's decision to replace the existing Fiji flag, which received huge criticism from the opposition. A week later, the cabinet endorsed the increase of the national minimum wage from $2 to $2.32 an hour. An explosion on a ship Betsy Ross anchored in the Lamy Bay landed six people in hospital, out of which two of them died. Also in the same month, the Fiji Airways announced its highest ever operating profit of $60.8 million and said goodbye to their outgoing chief executive, Stefan Pickler. In March, two men accused of importing heroin worth $30 million pleaded not guilty. Ethan Kai and Mohammad Shahid Khan were alleged to have smuggled one of the biggest shipments of hard drugs into the country. Sodelpa backbencher Ratu Viliame Tangiveithawa also passed away after a short illness. Severe cyclone Pam hit the country in March. Crops and properties were destroyed. Those affected were mostly from low-lying areas. Later in March, the government officially opened one of the ten government-run campuses of the Fiji Technical College. Nandi College was converted to a fully functional technical institution. That's the look back for the first three months of the year. Savaira Tambua will take you through the second quarter of the year tomorrow. Sharin Lata, FBC News. And it's time for sports now. Jamie joins us with the very latest. Thank you, Jackie. And good evening in sports after the break. Volleyball tournament goes ahead despite heavy downpour. And a look back at the first three months of sports in 2015. This and more coming up. Hola, I'm Duri from Nassin Market. My choice is simple, Gold FM. Only the classic hits. My name is Yvonne. I'm from Nandi. I love Gold FM. Only the classic hits. Sayandra, my name is Sunny. Only the Gold FM at Golden Point Resort, Rocky Rocky. Hi, I'm Anna of Nasinu. When it comes to a radio, my choice is always Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Anna and I'm from uh, Nandi. I love listening to Gold FM, Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. The turnout at the annual Tui Suva Youth Volleyball in me has pleased the organizers. People braved the heavy rain, which did little to dampen the spirits of players and spectators. Rahit Deo was at the event and files this report. A waterlogged park did not deter volleyball lovers in Lamy as they took part in the annual event. Only 18 teams were confirmed as of yesterday, but come game time, many more pushed their way in before the tournament started today. Today we have men's team, women's team, and the sub-juniors and juniors. 14 men, 13 ladies, sub-juniors, I think six of them, and the juniors, eight of them. Tournament turns 23 years this year, engaging youth in some constructive and keeping them away from trouble. And this game, we used to play it everywhere because we just want to keep our youth together. Most of the times, uh, our youth got locked up during festive seasons, and we want, we want to eliminate on that. The Suva Volleyball Association has also partnered with organizers and plan to get more villages involved in the outreach program. And uh, we believe this year we'll be moving on uh, to another new event uh, where we believe uh, we'd like to take volleyball to it. Uh, we'll be having one at uh, Dotota Village very shortly. But uh, when the time comes, then we'll be advertising for that uh, for, for development programs to, to Dotota. 
Another tournament will be held right here on New Year's Day. Ruhit Dev, FBC Sports. The Melbourne Victory football side's winless run in their A-League has extended to five games after they were held to a one-all draw by Perth Glory yesterday. Victory took a 1-0 lead to the break as Basat Barisha won and then converted a controversial penalty midway through the first half. But the visitors responded 15 minutes from time with a penalty of their own. Here are the match highlights. With Glory a little stretched. Barisha, out comes the goalkeeper to lead him. Oh, a penalty, says Sean Evans. Ante Kovic says no. Barisha against Kovic. Was there? Garcia inviting Risden to run after that. Oh, down he goes in the box, and Sean Evans gives a second penalty. Same end. Will it be the same result? Diego Castro punts the ball in the back of the net. Meanwhile, in another match played last night, Brisbane Road defeated Melbourne City 3-1. Jared Hayne made his return to the NFL today with the San Francisco 49ers side going down to Detroit Lions 32-17. Hayne had plenty of opportunities in the match with a total of 14 possessions. He had 9 runs for 27 yards and 5 catches for 20 yards and finished the game without making a single error. After today's performance, Hayne is expected to start against the St. Louis Rams in their next match. 2015 was a busy year for sports, both locally and on the international arena. Rohit Deo takes us through the highlights of sporting activities through the first three months of the year. Hey, keep possession. Keep possession. And Suva will get frustrated. And, and Naimbuli takes a good shot and a great shot from outside. And as you were talking January being the quietest of months, so Zamba football team clinched its 19th Pillars Garments Champion vs. Champion Series, defeating Suva in a home and away series. Men in Black received $5,000 prize money for winning the CVC title. The first ever Netball Prize Series took place in Fiji, with the Silver fans coming over to play the Fiji Pearls and Samoa. Fiji and Samoa were no match for the wall number two, but they did gain a lot of exposure from the event. In February, the Vodafone Fiji 7 side made a big leap towards winning their first World 7 Series title in nine years at the Las Vegas tournament. Fiji defeated New Zealand 35-19 in the cup final. The Ben Ryan Coat side later went on to win the next tournament in March, the Hong Kong title, where they again defeated New Zealand 33-19 in the cup final. By now, the National 7s team had a strong grip on the world title with only three tournaments remaining. Meanwhile, Tambandamu claimed the 39th Fiji Bita Mari 7th title after defeating Hideaway Hurricanes 25-14 in a high-tempo cup final at the ANZ Stadium. Tambandamu walked away with $10,000 prize money and Hideaway Hurricanes collected $5,000 for finishing runners-up. Fijian rugby star and Crusaders wing Nemani Nandolo received a double compliment from his peers, winning the Pacific Islands Players Association 2014 Fijian Players Player of the Year Award and the overall Digicel Pacific Island Players Player of the Year Award. The award kept off a standout year for the 27-year-old, who produced some scintillating performances for the Flying Fijians in a busy 2014. And that wrapped up sports for the first three months of the year. Join us tomorrow as we bring you the highlights of the next three months. Ruhit Deo, FBC Sports. And that's it from Sports Tonight. Jack is up next with weather. Good evening. Occasional showers was experienced over the interior and eastern parts of the country today. Elsewhere, isolated afternoon showers prevailed. Tropical disturbance TDOF, sorry, O5F, was located north of Solomon Islands at midday today. Another tropical disturbance was located northwest of Samoa. Associated active trough of low pressure extends over to Valu, Samoa and Tokelau. Temperatures were stable in most places. Bar capped off the day at 32 degrees Celsius this afternoon. Tomorrow it's more cloudy periods and showers are forecast for the Fiji group and the further outlook is for Wednesday. Occasional showers over the eastern parts and interior of the larger islands, afternoon or evening showers elsewhere. And recapping tonight's main stories again, Islamic leaders told to help spread the message to stop violence against women and children. 
Water cutting eased as heavy rain begins in most areas affected by the prolonged dry spell. The Nambasa economy expects a permanent improvement after the opening of the number Walundriketi Highway. Now to our poll segment. This week we are asking, do we have the right caliber of permanent secretaries? Visit our FBC website to take part. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. You've been watching FBC News. I'm Jackie Spate. We'll see you tomorrow at the same time.